Greetings, guitar fanatics. As you know, I'm always looking for better ways to help people learn and navigate the fretboard, trying to come up with practice strategies that will allow people to move fluently all around the neck of the guitar and play whatever it is that they hear in their heads. You know, I see a lot of different guitar instruction and it's almost always about learning some sort of technique or pattern in isolation. And it's just on and on and on about these different techniques to infinity. But there's very little stuff about how to take all these techniques and use them and combine them and integrate them to come up with more expressive, more beautiful, more musical licks and lines. And I think that's a big reason why guitarists are so obsessed about learning just one more technique because it's gonna be that one that's gonna make you sound just like Slash or Joe Satriani or Steve Vai or Pliny or whoever it is that you idolize. A little bit of sarcasm there. I really believe, and I can't make this point more emphatically or more sincerely, that as guitarists, we need to learn to explore the things that we already know and use them as starting points rather than final destinations. You know, recently I was practicing and I had a revelation about a particular technique that I had known of for decades, but I had never thought about it as a tool for connecting other ideas and techniques. And what I came up with, I think is so good that I'm gonna get right into it because I think it's gonna allow you to connect and expand your ideas all over the neck of the guitar. I'm not gonna waste any more time except to say thank you for checking out the video. Please do the like and subscribe thing and let's get on to the lesson. So let's take the lid off this discovery right away. No more mystery. I was sitting around one day messing with a great sounding technique called spread triads. This is a cool sounding device that was really brought to my attention by the great Eric Johnson in the late 80s and early 90s. Now, I'm sure you're all familiar with triads, and if you're not, I did a video, you can see it right here. You can learn triads all over the neck, but I'm gonna make the assumption that you are familiar with triads in this video. Very simply, if we're in the key of C and we take the first note, the third note, and the fifth note of the C major scale, so we would have C, E, in G, we would have a C major triad. And if we continue that process through the key, we would have D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and then we would be back to our C. What Eric Johnson did was introduce the rock guitar community to these spread triads, which is the idea of displacing one of the intervals by changing the order and taking that displaced note and moving it to a different octave. So instead of playing one, three, five, we would play the one, the five, and then we're gonna take the three, put it on top, an octave above where it would have been normally. And this sounds pretty amazing because not only do we make this wide intervallic leap, but we get the third of the triad on top of the voicing. The third interval, of course, defines the chord as being major or minor. So if we're playing a major chord, it sounds particularly sweet. If we're playing a minor chord, that minor third, sounds particularly dramatic. It's just a fantastic sound, and when Eric Johnson combined that technique with his tone and all the effects that he used, it was just spellbinding, especially 30, 40 years ago. Now, a quick note on sort of the nature of guitar teaching. Um, you know, you can use this phrase, spread triads, and it sounds kind of exotic, and it, and it, a lot of guitarists, it puts up a roadblock right away and they start making charts and diagrams and I've got to learn spread triads. Well, you probably know them already, you just don't know them by that name. If you can play a bar chord, a major bar chord and a minor bar chord that starts with the root on the fifth fret, and most of us know these. 
and you just drop one of the notes, you're already playing the spread triad. The spread triad is the root and the fifth, so it's just a power chord. And then you take the third, which you're already playing in these bar chord voicings anyway, and separate it out. So again, it's sort of the nature of guitar teaching to veil things and put labels on it. And I, I really think that can be harmful. Like I say, I think it throws up a mental roadblock. Okay, so the technique has been around for decades. What's the big deal, you might be asking? Well, guitarists being guitarists, we tend to learn a technique and then sort of isolate the technique after we learn it. I know lots of my guitar playing friends could play spread triads if I asked them to, but I never hear them use it when they improvise. It's kind of like we learn a technique so we can say we can play it, but then we never really use it, especially in the case of spread triads. The only time I hear them is when somebody's trying to be impressive at the local guitar store, playing a few notes of the intro of Cliffs of Dover. So here's the payoff. I was sitting around practicing one day and I played just a C major spread triad and sort of absent-mindedly, nonchalantly slid to the fourth and back to the third. And it caught my attention. I was like, wow, that sounds pretty nice. So I just continued through the scale diatonically using that same little pattern. I wasn't thinking about theory. I wasn't thinking about fingerings. I was just using my ear and trying to sound musical. Now, of course you need to know how to harmonize the major scale. You need to know the chords in the major scale. And of course, you probably need to get familiar with the shapes of these spread triads. But as I made in a previous point, if you know bar chords, you can already play spread triads anyway. And the larger point that I'm trying to make is that I was already playing the third interval in a different register than it would have been in normally. And my ear just kind of took me to that fourth and back. <laughs> And there's something super powerful about learning something organically, letting your ears and your fingers find a solution as opposed to reading it off of a diagram. You just connect to the information in a different, deeper way. So I decided to keep messing with this idea of using the spread triad as a platform for connecting more of the scale. So the next thing that I came up with was to take that previous phrase and when I would play from the fourth to the third to continue descending down to the root. And then take that diatonically through the scale. So now we've got a pretty cool seven note pattern. We've got a slide in there for some phrasing and then we've got a couple of descending notes to extend the pattern. And to make the point again, I was doing all of this organically. I wasn't writing out diagrams and scale patterns. I was just using my ear and letting my fingers find the notes. And of course I would make mistakes here and there, but the human brain learns from making a mistake. You make a mistake, the brain registers that mistake, and then differentiates and sort of course corrects to help you find the right notes. And it's that course correction that really burns things into our brains. Okay, so we just played a phrase that incorporated a spread triad, a little slide for a phrasing element, and then a couple of descending notes down to the root. And I want to reiterate that I don't necessarily want you thinking about scale patterns or even note names. I want you concentrating on the sound of the intervals. And after playing that pattern that went downward to the root, I also heard in my head, well, what if we were to play up to the root in the next octave above that displaced third? The question, of course, was how to get there. And it's pretty obvious that there's going to have to be a position shift. So I started to play around with that and I came up with two different patterns. The first one 
was to play the spread triad. After we play the spread triad, slide into the fourth. Then play the fifth. Now I'm gonna drop back down to the third. You notice I made that position shift. Really when I slide to the fourth, I play the fifth above the fourth, drop to the third, and I'm gonna play up to the root. So that's a fun little 11 note pattern that covers a lot of ground and can be phrased in any number of ways. The next idea was to play the spread triad, do that slide to the fourth and back, and continue descending to the root, but then do a position shift with my first finger, and play up to that root above the displaced third, so. And again, we could phrase that any number of ways. And I'm sort of imploring you, give yourself the freedom to experiment, find new ways to phrase things, find new ways to connect things. I think you'll surprise yourself how creative you can be when you do give yourself that freedom. So I kept on going with this, I kept on exploring it, and I came up with several different ways to sort of integrate a spread triad into some pentatonic scale ideas. So the first one I came up with was to play the spread triad. And again, that's C, slide into my fourth. And then go to the high E string, and I'm gonna play the pentatonic scale that is closest to fitting in that pattern. It happens to be C major pentatonic pattern four. Put those things together. Take it up the scale. That's D minor pentatonic pattern four. E minor. F. G, A minor. So that was the first pattern that I came up with. The second one was to play my spread triad. Play, slide into the fourth, and then I'm gonna play the fifth on the E string. And then I'm gonna slide up to the sixth and then I'm gonna play the corresponding pentatonic pattern there. That happens to be C major pattern five. The D minor uh, pentatonic, that would be pattern five also. E minor. F. And you get the idea. Again, very cool pattern. You can phrase those things any way you like. And of course, you would change them around, playing over different backings in different contexts. But again, you're getting the idea. You can combine and integrate these things. And then I came up with a, a phrase, a lick, a pattern, whatever you want to call it. And I really love this one. And it's to play the spread triad, do my little slide to the fourth and third. Continue down to the root. And from there, I'm gonna slide up into the ninth or the second. And then down the 
two strings, the G and D string, the again, the corresponding pentatonic pattern, that C major pattern five. The notes on the G and D string are at the fifth and seventh frets. So that whole phrase. Do it in minor. E minor. F. G. A minor. And again, with the phrasing, you can make this thing sound really dramatic. That A minor to me is really like a gut punch. When you go up to that C note, that minor third, and put a little vibrato on it, it's just very striking sound. So if we've just messed around with these concepts for a few minutes and look at how many different soloing ideas that we've come up with. So I was having so much fun with all of this that I kept exploring ideas and I came up with the idea to add the ninth into, or the second, I guess it would be, but again, it's displaced before we play the third. So now we have a four note arpeggio and I'm playing the root, the fifth, the ninth, the second, really, displaced second, and then the third. Cool sound, and as we have been doing with our other patterns, I decided just to go to the fourth and then back to the third. Again, very cool sound. And took that one step further and said, well, let's play the first, the fifth, the second, third. Then I'm gonna play the fourth and fifth on that B string. And I'm gonna grab the root uh, up above that third on the high E string. And then I'm gonna play down back to my third. dramatic as you want again with the phrasing I think the minor uh, the minor chords sound particularly dramatic and striking so that's nine different soloing ideas we've come up with so far and we've really just scratched the surface we haven't even talked about spread triads starting on uh, the sixth string as the root so for instance if I was at G I'd play G D B and then I'd have the rest of the three strings above that to come up with some sort of a pattern or idea. We can also play spread seventh arpeggios. That's a thing. And there's all sorts of ideas and phrases and licks and ways to combine these two. We could easily keep exploring and connecting and integrating. And that gets back to the point that I made about the tendency of guitarists to learn a technique, but then to keep that technique in isolation. I'm going to make the point again, and it's one of the most important ideas that I can pass along to you. As guitarists, we need to learn to explore the things we already know and use them as starting points, not final destinations. As always, I hope you got a lot out of this video. I hope you can take these ideas, make them your own, run with them, make them 100 times better than what I can do. Thank you for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. And as always, you keep practicing. You know I'm gonna keep making these videos. They're gonna help you make sense of soloing. And I will see you again soon.